Most of your interactions with a pharmacist probably comes from your local preferred pharmacy or drugstore, as some still call them. From what you can see, you probably think that their main job is to read prescriptions from doctors scribbly and writing and dispense accordingly. However, there's much more to being a pharmacist, and today, as promised, sorry, we do not have Mistress Jones, but we have the lovely Miss Vanessa Matthew, the chief pharmacist at the Joseph in France Hospital. She joins us. She joins Good Morning Eskins to tell us all about what is involved in being a pharmacist. Miss Matthew has 23 years of experience in the field of pharmacy. So, Miss Matthew, good morning. And welcome to the Money yes, yeah. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Alrighty, so we'll get right to it. So what are the qualifications required for those young ones who may be interested in becoming pharmacists? To become a pharmacist, you will need to have your science subjects, um, chemistry, definitely, uh, biology, physics, if needed. You know, you can have your, you definitely need maths and English. Those are like the basic, depending on where you go, okay. then your requirements may change, but you definitely need your chemistry okay. and another science subject, and of course your maths and your English. Oh, man. Yeah, there, there's a particular subject when I went to school, um, pharmaceutical calculations. It sent fear in everyone. In the high first school year. or whilst in college? In college. Okay, okay. It sent fear in everyone because they rub that in. If you do not pass pharmaceutical calculations, you cannot continue the course. And this is first year, first term. So from the get go, it's like, <laughs> okay, but you know, yeah, we, 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 we script and you, you work the sweat and like, oh, I can't go on. I can't mm. continue. <laughs> So I can imagine, uh, as you were talking about that, and reliving some of yeah. uh, the moments of that course and the dread, I imagine, that it brought to you, the importance as well that was underscored, the importance of that course. Yeah, it, it, it is the, the bedrock of the profession. If you cannot get your calculations right, then you cannot be a pharmacist. Can you imagine, can you, imagine you have a prescription requiring, for example, 125 milligrams per 5 mil of antibiotic. That's usually like for amoxicillin. And when you look on your shelf, you have 250 milligrams per 5 mil of amoxicillin. What do you tell the patient? Just kind of don't take the whole teaspoonful. No, you <laughs> cannot do that. And even worse, you have no suspensions at all, but you have 500 milligram capsules on shelf. What do you do? You should be able, as a pharmacist, to know the calculations. You're going to take a half teaspoonful, if it's 250 milligrams, or you should be able, as a pharmacist, whip up a suspension from the 500 milligram capsule, dispense it to your patient, and say, you're going to take one teaspoonful, you're going to take a half teaspoonful. Mm. We make it look flawless, but um, it's, it's not a, as flawless as, as it looks. Mm. But that's that's when you're a professional. Oh, I like it. <laughs> you mentioned suspension. What is that for those of us like myself that are not clear? A suspension is um, is, a, is a mixture, not not a mixture. Let me not use the word mixture. A suspension is a combination of powders that are not dissolved okay. in liquid, and so you need a suspending agent to keep those particles suspended in the liquid so that you are able to measure accurately every time the required dosage for the individual patient. Mm -hmm. So again, if it's um, 125 milligrams, if it's 500 milligrams, whatever it is, when you shake it up, that's one of the auxiliary labels on a suspension. Uh, you have to shake well. Okay. So your antacids are suspensions. The antibiotic liquid that you get from the pharmacy, those are suspensions. Um, anything that settles out yes, yes. is a suspension. Okay. And it has an added ingredient, which is a suspending agent, that allows those particles to remain suspended 
not as you shake it, they're up and then they're down. You know, they have to be suspended in the fluid for a period of time so that you can measure accurately um, the dosage that is required. Listening to you speak, there's such passion and knowledge yeah. uh, and everything <laughs> that you've said so far and a sense of joy as well. Uh, did you always want to be a pharmacist? No. Uh, when, when pharmacy was introduced to me, I didn't know anything about pharmacy. I never set foot in a pharmacy. Uh, my sister, I'm from Jamaica, my sister said to me when, when the time came to choose, she said, why not choose pharmacy? I'm like, okay. <laughs> and that was it. <laughs> and that was it. So I, I went. Um, I will admit it was not easy. Okay. Um, chemistry was one of the hardest subjects for me, mm -hmm. but it did give me a good beauty. But, you know, I, I, I made it. I had a lot of bruises on my knees and my <laughs> elbows and so on, but, you know, I made it. The Bible says making it on broken pieces. That's in Acts when there was a shipwreck mm -hmm. and everybody was saved and some came out on pieces of the boat and yes. some swam. But they made it someone, but I, must, I, I can't even swim. So I would not have been one of those swimming to the shore. Okay. I was holding on to that piece of, piece of the boat yeah. and making it to Make shore. It. The analogy of the shipwreck is yes. one that won't leave me anytime exactly. soon. <laughs> exactly. So how many years did, it, did you study covenant? Mm -hmm. uh, my course was three years. Okay. Yeah. My okay. course was three years. Okay. And then we had to do internship. And, um, and then, ta-da, you're given your license, and yeah, you're in the pharmacy counting and suspensions and doing the whole thing and getting the patients. Why are you going slow? <laughs> it's been a lot of fun to work with you, I have to say. <laughs> <laughs> but tell the patients you knew, so you have to make sure you do the right thing. You don't want to give them the wrong medication. Because we make it look so easy. Yes. We make it look so easy. You give us the prescription, and in a few seconds, we're able to tell you, um, we're able to give you information from the prescription. For example, um, how long do you want it? The doctor has prescribed it for a month. That's if you work in the private. Um, doctor has prescribed it for a month. You want the whole month supply. We're able to calculate it. Even just looking at it, we're able to say, mm -mm, this can't work, this one can't work with that one. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit too on the high side. Let me call the doctor to find out, Dr. X, is this really what you want for this patient? Is this a baby? Oh, this is a dosage for an adult. Is this, a, is this a, an elderly person? The frequency is too high, blah, blah, blah. And we do that at a glance. So they figure that, mm -hmm. oh, it's easy. Mm -hmm. yeah, as I said, when you're a professional, Yes, you know, it comes easy. It, it, we make it look easy, Indeed. but it's not. You Indeed. have to, you have to concentrate. You have to make sure that you keep your head on at all times. And so, even at the hospital, I will say to them, make sure you read and reread when you prepare your, when you get your prescription, and you are going to count your tablets or prepare your suspension and you have your labels, always check with the prescription, not what you wrote in your logbook, not what um, you have written elsewhere, maybe checking from your calculations, always check with the prescription, even when you're dispensing to the patient. So you take the prescription and you say, um, Ms. Jones, you're looking at the prescription, you're looking at the label, you're taking one tablet two times daily until it's finished. Ms. Jones said, okay, okay. Remember to drink a lot of water with it, yes. And it's going to last such and such a time. And she said, so I can take this with it and that with it. And yes, sure, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So, but you must. And when you make it a habit, when you make it a habit of always checking your prescriptions, always checking your label, double checking your label, especially... If you work with someone, um, that person was responsible for counting my tablets or preparing the suspension, I have to make sure that this is multivitamins in the bottle, in the envelope, and it matches the information here. Mm -hmm. So when that patient leaves, that patient, you should be satisfied. Mm -hmm. 
that that patient is going with the right thing that the doctor has prescribed. Um, Engaging conversation so far. There's a question that I am tempted to ask now about the registration of pharmacists, whether it resembles that process for uh, nurses and doctors or that sort of thing. What happens is they will submit their documentation to the ministry mm -hmm. and it's taken from there. You're given a, a number, a registration number, and that's your number that you'll carry for life okay. as long as you're registered here in, in, um, in St. Kitts. So I have my registration number here, mm -hmm. and I also have my registration number from in Jamaica. Mm -hmm. right. um, also, I, I don't think it's done here, but also in some countries, added to making your um, application to the government, you may have you may be required to do a state board exam, mm -hmm. which is. Um, an exam to prove that you are you are what you say you are. And and if you meet the qualification and the standard in that country. Okay. Okay. So in your opinion, Vanessa, what qualities should a pharmacist possess to be effective? <laughs> you should be patient. Okay. Good First, second and third, you need to be patient. Mm. You need to have empathy. You need to, to love people. Yeah. You need to be engaging. Um, you cannot be somebody who cannot be bothered with that little old lady mm. or that woman who has that child crying forever and just need to, you know. You, you need to also know how to separate yourself from your personal um, issues mm -hmm. so that you don't throw it on the patient. One of the things I've said to the staff is when a patient snaps at you, which they do ever so often, God, sweet patients, um, <laughs> one of the things that I say to them is don't take it personal. You know, um, they would have been here for a long time. And here it is that I'm having to sit again for another 10 minutes, waiting, and there's a crowd, and you look like you are taking long to finish my prescription. I remember just recently, the prescription was written for a particular drug, can't remember it now, and we had to contact the doctor yeah. who was in accident and emergency, so I went over to accident and emergency, doctor wasn't there, and the patient saw us, you know, not really t attending to her, and there were others who came and left, and came and left, and she's still not getting, and she was getting a bit fussy, but we had to explain to her, we needed to contact the doctor, because we needed to confirm, first of all, the prescription was written for a child, and we needed to confirm that this medication at this dosage is what the doctor wanted. Um, I always say to them, stress it. Do not assume that what you see is what the doctor wants. Okay. And would you believe that the doctor said, oh my, no, that's not what I wanted. The dosage would have been too high for the child. So um, you, you have to be patient. You have to love people. And good communication skills, not just, not just being able to read the prescription and, and being able to read the information back to them, but also pick up on their body language. Sometimes, for example, I'm at the window and I can sense from your body language that I really don't want to hear what you have to say. Um, or I am really in a hurry and I am frustrated and I'm tired and so you have to read the body language and sometimes they come with all the fire at you and you have to come with all the water to quench them because you need to ensure that I need to make sure that you are leaving here calm and understanding what I'm saying to you because I don't want you to go with all your frustration and anger and take the medication in the wrong way, and then call me back and say, you don't understand, and what was I supposed to take, or even, 
you give me the wrong medication, right? So, yes, yeah, so I'm, but uh, right. at the end of the day, it is, it is rewarding, very rewarding. All right, we've seen the news, and I don't know if we've, I'm pretty sure we might have had people being addicted to uh, prescription medication and so on. Uh, are you trained in any way to identify someone who might actually be going through that addiction? Uh, I wouldn't say it's trained, but you know your clientele, mm. and you, you know what pe how people should behave, and... If I'm coming to do pharmacy and I'm jittery, jittery, and I look at the drug and I realize that mm, this is something that could cause some sort of agitation, this person could be addicted to it, and you know, they're, sometimes they're, again, you read body language. So you need to understand people, you need to understand their personalities. And also, when you have repeat clients, you know, you know them, you know what they're taking. And you know that this person is on a drug that is it's a possibility that you could get addicted to it. When I dispense a month's supply to you last week, Friday, today is Monday, you should not be coming back to me for that medication again. Oh, it got wet in the laundry. Um, rain and you know a story a story a story so what do you do you say okay um, well you need to go back to the doctor it happened once um, so maybe they may try to come back maybe two weeks so we'll curtail the amount of medication that we give so we'll give you a week supply because we have been giving you a month supply and you are always coming back with a story okay. There was a particular patient who um, we realized that she is addicted to this drug and she has been going to other pharmacies around and she'll know when to come, when who is on duty and so on and so forth. And we had to just kind of put some brakes on what she was doing and so everybody was notified, now everybody, um, they, they all have radars out for her. We now have a book where we enter all those controlled drugs and so there's a type of everybody will now need to sign for. And so um, the good will suffer for the bad. Yeah. And it is, I, I remember telling my daughter that it's because of people trying to break the laws and break the rules why other rules have to be put in place. So now patients are asking, why do I have to sign for this? I never used to have to sign. And we have to explain that it's a controlled drug. We want to monitor. We want to make sure that everybody is taking the medication as they need to. There are special cases because nothing is absolute. So we have our chemo patients. We have our sickle cell patients who will need to be on these drugs at high doses for extended period. We understand that, but... There are those who will slip through, who try to slip through the crack, and we have no um, a system in place. And well, that's the important part. Yeah. The yeah. fact that you have that system that. Yeah. And yeah. when that's breached, then we have to find something. No. Yes. Yeah. You know what?